key takeaway. I mean, such a huge change for the country. I mean, a reversal of what's happened for the last 60 years. Sure, it's, it's uh, as, a, as an interested party, it's been a surreal experience nonetheless. Uh, but as a, as, as a citizen, as a young person, I think uh, we've got to uh, look at this positively and, and seek opportunities for the progressive change of this country. So that's, that's the kind of perspective I'm taking. So Cheryl, this moment could be seen a time to rebuild institutions, maybe engage younger voters. They're seen as this uh, block of non-voters. How can you engage with them, maybe change the dynamics of politics for the country? Sure, I think there'll be time for that. But uh, as, as, a, as a member of the coalition just lost, uh, I think there are more immediate things uh, that we need to look at. Uh, we need to look at the reasons why we lost and be very frank and honest about that. And uh, I think that's, that's the kind of conversation that, that all of us are going to have in the next days and weeks. So what's the key takeaway? What are the reasons you think it lost? Uh, I think um, I think we have to look very carefully at a slew of things. Uh, I think there needs to be a frank conversation about the changes that need to happen around personnel, around not just personnel, but the way we do things, uh, what we stand for. Uh, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of soul searching that's going to happen. And I just mentioned a couple, deep in terms of personnel and leadership, in terms of uh, the content of uh, our actual struggle, what we stand for. We're no longer, perhaps, you know, just, just, uh, just to think out loud, maybe this idea of stability is no longer that attractive anymore to people. So we've got to figure out what we are uh, as a coalition and also as the biggest party, AMNO. Uh, we've got to figure out how do we reconnect with the Malay voters who clearly uh, didn't really come out for us. So soul searching to be done, honesty to be had, fundamentals perhaps to be changed. But what's the low hanging fruit that in the near term right. can perhaps be grasped? I think uh, because this was a tsunami of the people, uh, I'm not one at this point, this early stage, I'm not one to say that this was a Malay tsunami. Because I think across the board, there was wholesale rejection. We just, I mean the latest numbers, we just got 30% of the popular vote. That's disastrous. That's less than one out of three. So I think uh, in terms of low-hanging fruits, we've got to figure out uh, what were the key reasons in terms of maybe certain policies that didn't uh, go down well to people. Maybe they felt that we didn't stand for them. Uh, maybe we were too apologetic about certain issues that were uh, being discussed and we didn't seem reformist enough. So I think, you know, it's, I mean, I'm sorry this answer is not complete, but I think uh, it's, it's, it's everything, it's everything. In Malaysia has such a young population. The average age is, is 18. Yeah. Being a young person yourself, I mean, do you think the leadership reflects the aspirations Clearly of the young not. population? Clearly not. I mean, I'm going to just... Do you think you require younger leaders Absolutely. for that too? So, yeah, thanks for prompting me for that. <laughs> I think we need younger leaders. I think uh, we clearly fail to connect with the younger population. Uh, there's something wrong there in terms of the personnel, in terms of how we advertise ourselves, and maybe in terms of even the content of what we stand for needs to be relooked at. So I, I think it's everything's up for grabs. Some of the stats here when it comes to under 30 candidates that were fielded, Pakatan Harapan had something like 15, whereas BN had four. So how then do you engage more people to perhaps enter politics? Right. Enter politics and enter our side. I think that's the, that's the question, right? Uh, in terms of. Uh, in terms of why we lost, uh, I'm not sure if it's entirely because of candidates. Uh, because you see certain situations where the, our opponents, who's now government, uh, fielded relatively unknowns. And they won big. And we had certain candidates who, who you know, didn't appear to be well liked, didn't appear to be uh, much known. And they defeated long-serving, clearly, uh, you know, uh, respected Individuals like, say, Khalid Nordin and, and Johor, uh, I think even our opponents will admit that he's a, he's a good politician, he's a good servant, but they voted against him. So I don't know so much about how, I mean, I'm not sure this is about candidates.